Hi, uh, this is uh, mini lecture two for uh, design of usability to a 3CR. Um, I'm going to talk about usability testing now. Um, we need to understand what usability testing means. It's a really important part of designing for usability. Um, here I've got an amazing uh, and lovely thing, the uh, FIO X5, which is a high fidelity uh, digital audio player. It plays high definition format. It's got a pinwheel like um, the iPod that used to have. And if you go on the pinwheel, you can scroll through the different tracks of the current album that you might be playing or playlist. So I'm having a look at that and I'm going through my tracks and I think that is really pretty cool. So I'm saying, yep, that's a great bit of technology. I know it's easy to use. I really like it. So I think it's got good usability. Um, now, one of the issues with that kind of approach is that it's just my opinion. And usability testing should be more scientific than that. It should run tasks or carry out tests on a number of people to try and make our results more objective, uh, more neutral, and not just about one person's opinion. So this is about how we do that. This actual lecture is quite short, and you'll be actually running a usability test for real. Uh, in this upcoming studio. So usability work is all about finding out how usable a technology is. What does usable mean? It means easy, enjoyable, and efficient to use. It means using something without having to think too much about it, without getting frustrated. Something should be clear, uh, seamless, and you can carry it out without worrying too much. That, that's what usability is all about. It might even be enjoyable as well. So to work out how uh, usable a technology is, we need to run usability tests. It's not the only thing we can do. There are other techniques. But for this particular lecture, we're going to concentrate on usability testing. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about that. So just moving on. Uh, so usability tests are based around tasks. Okay, So we have to define something that we want a user to do. Then we will present them with the technology, tell them what the task is, and ask them to carry it out. And we'll have a number of users, maybe 10, maybe 20, carrying out the same task on the same technology. So for example, uh, let's say that we're going to use a phone. Let's say that it's uh, one of the new uh, iPhone, iPhone 6. And the task is that from the, open s from the um, front screen, we would ask our users to add a contact to the phone. And we define the name of the contact and what the number is and ask them just to add that to the phone. Okay? Or let's say it's for a website. Let's say it's for Coventry University. We would ask people from the front page of that website to find the contact details of the university. Okay? And again, we would ask several users to do that, uh, 10, 20, and see how they do it. Uh, let's say we were going to do a usability study of a game. Uh, Xbox possibly, and we would ask our users again from a front screen to select a particular game that we would define in advance. So the way we do usability testing of technology is based around tasks. And usually the task that we choose is one that's important for that technology. It's an important and central task. So we need to think about what that is. And one of the big lessons in usability testing is we can't test everything so we're just going to go for the really, really important things. Now, we're going to do a usability test. Uh, as a whole, we're trying to understand how usable something is, but we're usually measuring something and measuring something specific. So common measures for usability tests are these. Effectiveness. And effectiveness means can the user actually do something, yes or no. Right? So in a usability test, if we say uh, on the Coventry University site, find the contact details, what we're measuring is can they find those details or not, yes or no. Okay? And we might um, decide a time limit. So let's say can they do that in 20 seconds, yes or no. Now another thing we can measure is called efficiency. And that means the number of steps or stages that a user has to go through in order to complete a task. Um, so we're counting something different, not whether they can or not, 
but how many steps they go through to achieve something. Okay, so that means we're measuring actions or steps. So uh, for the example about adding a contact on an iPhone, we'd see how many steps those users are going through, how many screens, how many clicks. Another thing we often measure is satisfaction, and that is how happy was the user with the interaction? So we ask them to carry out a task. How do they feel about it? And we can ask them, how satisfied were you with this interaction? Number one means not satisfied. Number five means very satisfied uh, on a five-point scale. So in usability testing, as a whole, we're measuring usability. But what that means in practice is we're going to split things up into different categories, like effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction. And again, there's lots of other things you can measure as well. It depends on what your problem is and what kind of usability test you want to run, what you want to find out. So moving on, let's say we ask our user to add a contact to the iPhone 6. And it takes that user 42 seconds, right? Question is, is 42 seconds a good number? Is it too long? Or is it a good time? We don't know. So what we have to do is establish what's called baselines. And a baseline means what we're aiming for. What is the standard of performance that we want to see? So we might say that adding a contact should only take 10 seconds. So 42 seconds is a bit slow and would suggest there's a usability problem for that particular user. Now, we get baselines from expert performance. Usually, as researchers, we would measure baselines by measuring our own performance. So we would carry out the task ourselves, usually two or three of us, and then take an average of what our performance is and use that as the baseline. OK? So then we know if a measured time is a good one or a bad one. OK? If a time seems long compared with a baseline, as I say, it might indicate some problem with design of the phone that makes the task difficult. Okay? If, one, if not just one user, but 10 are taking 30 seconds, 40 seconds to add a contact, when we think it should take 10 seconds, we've got some kind of design problem with the phone, some usability problem that we might need to think about and think about how we could redesign this interaction to improve it, to make it more usable. Now, similarly, with efficiency, the number of steps it takes. If a user takes eight clicks to find, uh, to add the contact details, is it good? Is the user clicking too often? Should it only take four clicks? So again, we need to think about what's the baseline? What are we aiming at? And again, if most people are taking a lot more clicks than we think it should take, that indicates some usability problem. So we need baselines. A satisfaction baseline is... We can't really define that, right? We leave that uh, to users. We might aim at high satisfaction. We might think the interaction is satisfying, but we need to depend on the users that we involve in a test to find out that result. OK? In the uh, upcoming studio, you will be looking at the tasks and deciding what the baselines are for particular tasks. Now, user tests are observed by the researcher. So imagine you're in your classroom, you set up a computer, your task is to find the contact details on Coventry University website. You invite a user in and say, what I would like you to do is sit down now, find the contact details on this site. And then you watch what the user does. And while you're watching, you can count the time it takes, count the number of steps, write them down. And afterwards, you could ask the user, how satisfied were you with that interaction on a scale of one to five? And then you invite the next user in, and the next one after that, and the following one. Let's say you've got 10 users, so you've got 10 sets of data. Okay? And as I say, we usually have uh, sheets that we write these things on, write the completion time, write the number of errors, write the number of steps for the particular user that we are uh, doing the test on at that moment. And that involves using a data sheet Again, in the studio, you'll be given a data sheet to do this work. Now, let's say we have run our test on 10 users. We've got 10 sets of data, 10 different completion times, 10 measures of efficiency, which are how many steps it took, and we've got 10 satisfaction ratings, OK? So we've got to report that data. We've got to show other people what that data is. 
And here's an example just for four users. We can see that this is an, uh, an effectiveness measure. Sorry, I've got that wrong, it's an efficiency measure. So this is how long it took. And we can see that the baseline is 20 seconds. So we think it should take 20 seconds based on our, um, uh, our own uh, investigation of the issue. And the dark blue lines are what those users actually did, how long it took those users. So it ranges from user 1, 17 seconds up to 25 seconds for user 3. The average is 21.5 seconds against the baseline of 20. So the task took them 21.5. We say it should take 20. So it seems a good result. So let's say that that scales to 10 people and the average is, say, 21 seconds. Our baseline is 20. That means we've got a really good result. And we can say that that technology is usable on that task because what we've measured in terms of user performance is similar to what we were aiming for. So uh, here's what I uh, just said. We've got a good result on that user test. And what we do with the data is show how the data supports our claim about usability. We want to say the usability is good or it's not so good. So if the average completion time was, say, 40 seconds against the baseline of 20, we'd have to say, that's not so good. The usability doesn't seem good for this task. And we then look at the reasons to do with the interface design and think about what might need to change in order to make it more usable. Uh, as I say, in the studio, you will be carrying out a usability test of your own. Uh, you will use uh, people in the class as your users, just two or three, and get a real flavor of how you do this work, which is really central to designing for usability. So that's the end of mini lecture two.